Well, howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to talk about stylophones, specifically this type of stylophone known as the pocket organ. Now, these were released in the late 60s by a British company called Dubrec, and they're still made today, and they have this same basic aesthetic. Now, there are other stylophones that have been made over the years, including the Stylophone 350S, the Stylophone Gen R8, and others that have a different aesthetic, but for this video, we're just gonna talk about the pocket organ, and I'm gonna do a follow-up video about those other types of stylophones. Now, the pocket organ is pretty easy to identify. It has a very unique aesthetic, and of course, it it is classified by this stylus here, this little power switch. And of course, when you touch this, you get notes. Now there have been five different generations of these pocket organs over the years. The very first generation was only made in 1968. They made some minor changes to the design and that same design was made till around 1974 or so. Then they made another change to the design then you notice but after 1975 up until 2007 we don't see any stylophones made and then in 2007 came the fourth generation and finally in 2020 the current generation now that period where they weren't making stylophones we're going to refer to as the dark period and that's important because the stylophones made before the dark period are collectively considered vintage stylophones and that stylophones made after the dark period are collectively considered modern stylophones <laughs> So how do you tell the difference between a vintage stylophone and a modern stylophone? Well, I have one of each right here. And the easiest way is flip it over and act like you're gonna replace the batteries. Now, this is a vintage stylophone. And if I open the back here, first of all, the back opens. And second of all, you can see it is powered by a nine volt battery. All of the vintage stylophones are powered by nine volt batteries. Now, if I take a modern stylophone and flip it over, you can see there's this little battery door and it's powered by three AAA batteries. All of the modern stylophones are gonna be powered by AAA batteries. Now, another easy way to tell the difference is to look at these switches down here. Now, you can see these each have two switches down in the corner. This is the modern stylophone and you can see the switches are clearly labeled power and vibrato. The vintage stylophones will say organ and vibrato like this. And another easy way to tell is your modern stylophones will have a little volume over here on the right side, whereas your vintage stylophones will have nothing there. Okay, so if you've got a vintage stylophone, how do you know if it's a generation one, two, or three? Well, there's a couple of telltale signs to help you. So first and foremost, most of the stylophones have a keypad that looks something like this. But the generation ones, the keypad is a little different. You might just be able to see there, they've got those little black rectangles on the keyboard and those are not present in the generation two or three. So that's a dead giveaway that you've got a generation one right there. Now, another thing that you that is a dead giveaway is on the generation threes, they have this little volume knob there. In addition to the volume knob, the generation three has another dead giveaway and you can easily see that by popping it open. If you look inside the back, the Generation 3 has an integrated circuit right here that is not present on the Generation 1 or 2. So if you see the integrated circuit, you know you've got a Generation 3. So if you have a vintage stylophone and it doesn't have the volume knob here and it doesn't have those black spots on the keyboard, then chances are it's a version 2 like this one. And this is probably what you're going to find the most out there in the vintage category. Now the version 2s have a couple different important things that happened during that time period and some people subcategorize those but for the ease of, uh, of explanation today I'm just going to call them all generation 2s. Some of the generation 2s will have letters below each key like this and some of them will have numbers it was during generation two that they went from the letters to the numbers and everyone since then has had the numbers if you look at the circuit on the inside of the stylophone by popping the back off some of them have individual axial resistors and other ones have bar resistors and that's another thing that happened during this time period. Now you will see different colors of stylophone in this period, and the most popular was this black and silver, but you also see a lot of this white and silver. And there's also a third one that I actually don't have here, but that had kind of a beige color. 
Well, it's not just colors in this era of stylophone that actually represented a different type of stylophone. So the black ones were what was called the standard model, the white ones were what was called the treble model, and the beige ones were what were called the bass model. So it is just what you're thinking, the stylophones were effectively tuned an octave apart. Now to illustrate this, I'm just gonna put a graphic on the screen here that kind of shows how they overlap, but effectively between G0 and G5, you can see kind of where the stylophone's laid out. So what that means is if I take a standard stylophone like this and I play this high C, that should be the same note as the low C on a treble stylophone. So another thing to note about this era of stylophones, all of the vintage stylophones have a eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter uh, mono output jack, whereas in the later ones we'll actually see they went to stereo. So one other thing I should probably mention while we're talking about vintage stylophones, there is an anomaly of another sort of generation of stylophone that there were some stylophones that were licensed and made in Hong Kong and um, they're identifiable. They typically have an aesthetic sim similar to this, and those particular stylophones are easily identifiable because if you flip them over, they'll have a battery door on the back, and also on the side here next to the output jack, they'll have a 2.5 millimeter jack that's used for the power jack. Now, those were not made in England. Uh, those were made in Hong Kong, but they were actually licensed products. Okay, that's gonna bring us to the modern stylophones or the ones made after 2007, the generation fours and generation fives. Now, I should note that these have been made in a lot of different colors, both the gen fours and gen fives have come in various colors, black, silver, pink, white, you name it. And um, the colors no longer indicate what type of stylophone it is, but the easiest way to tell the difference between the gen four and gen five stylophones, let me show you the end here. The Gen 4 has two jacks, the Gen 5 only has one. Now, some of the Gen 5s, if you look right here, some of them will have a USB jack there. Um, that USB jack can be used to power, it does not allow it to you know, synchronize or do anything like that. There is another major difference between these two stylophones. The Generation 4 uses a digital circuit, while the Generation 5 uses a fully analog circuit. Now don't just think that analog is better than digital, there are a lot of people that say they prefer the Generation 4 to the Generation 5, and then of course there's a whole camp of people that say they prefer the Generation 5 to the Generation 4. Now on the modern stylophones, they all have this three-way switch down here, so that's another easy way to to identify them, but on the generation fours and five, the switch behaves ever so slightly different. In the generation four, position one and two are in the same octave, where position three is an octave higher. Now, coincidentally, if you were to map that along with the original stylophones, position one and two are where the style, standard stylophone was, and position three lines up to the treble stylophone. Now, on the generation fives, they did it a little different. It still has a three-way switch, but each one is a different octave. So the first position is going to be effectively like the standard stylophone. The middle position is going to be effectively like the treble stylophone. And the third position is going to be effectively a higher stylophone than was ever built before then. So you know what? Let's hear all of them and you can decide which one you like best. So there you go, that concludes this video on the history of the stylophone. Now, if you're thinking that I've been into stylophones for a long time, that's actually not entirely true. I just got my first stylophone last year. And shortly after I got it, I started to become infatuated with them and started to learn some of the history. And I went out looking for this video and I couldn't find it. I could not find this video right here, so I decided to do the research and make it myself. I hope this is helpful to somebody. Thanks for tuning in.